Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And this time I want to show you something that comes up when I do my corporate training and when people use PyCharm. This is not a PyCharm issue, but PyCharm makes it easy to see very quickly. So as you can see here on my screen, I have a super simple program. The program consists of print, and then we call, call print and pass it hello world. Nothing more traditional or standard than that. And if I run this now, if I run the program, uh, let's run it that way. You'll see that it's running my program. I see hello world. And then I see this, I see process finished with exit code zero. And I must say that when my students, especially students who don't have programming experience, see this message, they kind of freak out. They're not sure what's going on or why they should care. Is this good? Is this bad? Is this otherwise? So let's step back for a moment. Um, at least on Unix systems. When I say Unix, I mean Unix, Linux, the Mac. I actually don't know exactly how exit codes work on Windows, so I'm sorry if you're using Windows. Um, but basically, when a program finishes running in Unix, it can return what's known as an exit code. And I'll talk about different exit codes in just a moment. But if nothing went wrong, if the exiting program wants to say, hey Unix, I just finished running and nothing bad happened, it says, it says so by passing an exit code of zero. That is to say, whenever you run a program in Unix, every program returns an exit code, and zero means all was good. So truth be told, if you've run things from the command line in Unix before, you've undoubtedly gotten exit code zero many, many times. The only difference is that it's not displayed to you, so you don't know that it's there. But it is actually there behind the scenes. I'm going to actually open up the terminal within PyCharm here. And if I say here ls, so ls is going to show me the uh, files in this directory. And now I say echo dollar question mark. Dollar question mark contains, it's a variable that contains the exit code from the most recent program. We can see that that's zero. What if I say ls blah, 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 blah. Well, I get an error message there, right? I can say echo dollar question mark. And look at that. I got an exit code of two. So when things are good, I get an exit code of zero. When things are bad, at least this sort of bad, I get an exit code of two. What if I try something else entirely? What if I try ls of blah, 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 blah. All right, can't access that. And if I ask what the exit code is, that's still two. What if I just say here, oops, let's say ls minus minus blah, 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 blah. Right, that's an unrecognized option still exit code of two. So basically LS returns an exit code of two, it would seem, if things are bad and zero otherwise. Okay, so we now see that everything produces an exit code when you run it in Unix. And because my Python program here uh, ran successfully, so it also produced an exit code of two. What if I do something that will make it not work here? Like for example, what if I say print with two Ts? Now PyCharm will try to convince me this is a bad idea. It puts our big, bold, red underline under that, but I can still try to run this program. What do I get? Aha, name print is not defined, and I get process finished with exit code one. So even though exit code zero means everything is good, every other exit code means that something is bad, but there is no standard standardization of what the non-zero exit codes are. It's just good is zero, bad is everything else, and you can then decide within your own program what exit codes you want to return if things go wrong. Now, this might seem strange because so far we haven't seen any way for me to set the exit code because the problem here, that the exit code is not coming from me, from my program, it's coming from Python trying to run my program. And indeed, what if I do this? What if I say print hello world and I say print, you know, hello again? Right, so if I do this, I'm gonna get an exit code of zero. That's good, and what if I put in an extra space there? Now I run it again, and we get exit code one. So we see now, right, if I do exit code, right, we're gonna get exit code one if things go wrong for a whole variety of different things. So that's nice, that's interesting, but can we take it a little further? What if I want my program to produce a non-zero exit code when it finishes running? Right, what if I want to do this? What if I want to say here, name equals input, enter your name, a little script here. And then I can say, if name equals equals Ruben, then print hi boss, all right? And then else print hi, and we'll say name. I right, can even say here, an F string. So this is pretty good, right? I can run it, it'll ask me my name. If I say Ruben, it says hi boss. And then I can run it again and it'll say, you know, you know someone else. And all that's working, but what if I want different exit codes to come back 
if depending on different names. So exit code zero will be if it's my name because you know I'm the boss and everyone else will get exit code one. Can I do that? The answer is yes. I can actually say here, import sys. And import sys, sys is actually a module that's not only built in, it doesn't, well, sys is a special kind of module in that it is loaded automatically into Python, but the name is not defined. So you need to say import sys to have access to it, but you're not actually using any extra memory or tiny, tiny bit of memory, just defining this variable. And then I can say here, sys.exit of, let's say zero. And here I'll say sys.exit of one. Actually, let's even say one, two, three, four. And now if I run it, and I say here, Ruben, it'll say exit code zero. And then if I run it again, and I say someone else, it'll say 210. Oh yeah, that's right, it has to be up to, I think it's 128. All right, can't win them all. So let's try someone else. There we go, one, two, three. So that will actually work fine. So you can define on your own, whatever exit codes you want, and then you just need to tell whoever's gonna be calling your program if this goes wrong, you'll get exit code one. If that goes wrong, you'll get exit code two. I haven't seen that used very much, but you should know that it's possible. Now you might be saying, wait a second, I've seen this exit before, but I don't actually need to say sys.exit. I can actually change my program and I can say just exit. I don't need this sys exit business. And if I run things now, seems to be working. If I say Ruben, give me high Boston zero. And if I save someone else, it gives me one, two, three. So it actually seems to have worked, right? Well, the answer is yes, but. It turns out that exit has been sort of surreptitiously added into the built-ins namespace by Python when it started up, that you're really not supposed to call exit directly. There's a special module called site. And the site module, which is loaded automatically uh, when Python starts up, if you don't use the capital S, uh, option, so Python dash capital S. I don't know why you would want to do that. But if you if you don't touch capital S, just do run it by default, then exit is actually available within the built-ins namespace, meaning you don't say, need to say sys dot. But, but the Python documentation says very explicitly, don't do this. That exit is available, um, it's made available mainly for interactive programs. That is to say, when you're using like the Python interactive shell, that in normal cases, you should actually Import sys and say sys.exit. That's like the right way to do it, the appropriate way to do it. All right, so I hope that this little exploration of exit codes is helpful for you. Um, you can get lots of free Python tips and article every week on my free weekly newsletter. Hit me up on Twitter and on email if you have any other questions about Python, and I'll see you soon in another video.